coming up in today's rum show, I'm going to be talking about the Pusser's rum. I'm going to be deep diving into all of their range of rums there, all kind of five of them. We're going to be having a little test. Uh, the spiced rum uh, is the Sly Dog this week, so I'm going to be having a look at that after Pusser's. And then this week's Mixer of the Week, uh, I'm revisiting a Fentiman's Tropical Soda because it's absolutely glorious. So, uh, welcome back. This is show two. Uh, massive thank you to everyone that watched uh, the first show. I've had lots of cracking feedback in there. I haven't actually had touch wood uh, to this point any bad words. Uh, I know it was quite of a long video and I think this might be the same, but on the whole, people, well, 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 everyone, all of you were kind of like, we love this, we just want more of it. So thank you for the feedback. There has been some awesome suggestions, uh, two of which I'm gonna definitely implement in this show. Uh, so that and part of that is going to delve into some members only content which leaves off the back of this as well uh, and that will become evident through this but I kind of I'm just going to keep rolling with this and if you've got any suggestions in the weeks coming forward uh, then let me know it's pretty much unedited there will be I'm actually going to stitch it together in three parts this time instead of trying to do it in one uh, but it pretty much unedited if I make any fluffs that's it it's staying in so uh, let's crack on this week uh, I want to sort of dive, deep dive into all oh, the other things to mention. If you are watching this after it's premiered, so it goes out on Thursday nights at eight o'clock. Um, but obviously after that, after it's finished, you can watch it at your leisure sort of thing. You can watch it at one and a half speed or times two speed, whatever. It will be chaptered up after the time. So you can jump straight to the point. So if you're not interested in spiced rums, uh, skip past it and go to the mixer. If you're not interested in normal rums, skip to the spiced rum bit. It will all be chaptered up for you. So. Uh, let's crack on with pusses. Uh, just to give you a little bit of history, I'm not going to deep dive into it. You don't, you don't really care about too much about the history. You kind of just want to know what the stuff tastes like. So, um, just to kind of give you a little rough outline about the brand itself, pusses. Now, I don't know too much about pusses. Um, I haven't. I don't really do in-depth research. It's not my kind. I just want to know what stuff tastes like. But the bit I know about pusses. Don't see this, this is where people get confused a little bit. Don't see this as the rum that the Navy used to drink, okay? It is not, it is not the, it's not the brand, okay? What Pusses relates to is, back. we all know, or we should know about the uh, the daily tot that the uh, the Navy used to get right up until, I think it was, well, it's right up here. Right up here, you won't be able to see this, post the 31st of July, 1970, I've got a big Pusses sign there. Uh, the daily the daily ration that, that all the sailors in the Navy used to get was, it was called the, per, it's the ship's person, the ship's purser, was the guy who basically looks after all the stock, the store cupboard and all that, and he would give the daily ration. Uh, and I'll dig dive into him a little bit, uh, to give, because it's kind of in reference to uh, the gunpowder proof in a second. Uh, but that's where that came from. Now, uh, the whole point to that is, it wasn't Pusser's rum, it was a different rum. However, Pusser's is the only rum that is blended to that exact specific recipe. Now, okay, you will not find another rum out there that was that had that exact recipe, if you know what I mean. This is the only one. So Pusses, even though it wasn't the brand, Pusses is the exact recipe, um, spe specifically that one, the gunpowder proof that the, the, um, the Navy used to get. So that's kind of the brief outline behind the brand. Uh, I, can't, I don't, as I say, I don't actually know when Pusses, I should know, I should have researched, but it doesn't really, doesn't really affect things too much, but I don't really know when Pusses, the brand came about, um, but it, it's kind of irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. Now, just to quickly run you through the rain, as I say, I've got my notes up here because, you know, I'm learning some of this for the first time with you guys, just to kind of share the knowledge, but it's kind of a lot um, that I kind of, I kind of do know. So just to kind of quickly clarify, uh, the ship's purser, Pusser is the slang term for that. So that's where pusser come from. It's the slang term for the ship's purser, which is that guy that looks after the stock. Code. Now, uh, let's take you through the rums in turn. Oh, just one thing to quickly point out, I've just said there, big bold letters. The thing to point out with these it is a Guyanan rum. It, uh, even though it's blended in the British Virgin Isles, so I think that's right, it is a Guyanan rum. Uh, so it's Demerara based, and this is the big key difference, okay? It is distilled in a wooden pot still, 
okay it's not in uh, stainless steel or anything like that or copper or whatever the whole point of navy rum is that it's distilled in wood stills okay so and i've got i'll get my terminology right uh the te when you see something that actually says t uh, navy rum it means it is distilled in wooden rum when you see something that says navy style of rum then it means it's just a normal rum uh, distilled any old way you like and then probably flavoured and coloured up to look like um, a navy rum. There are a couple of brands out there that you'll be able to pick straight away that kind of do go down the whole navy style of rum route. Uh, but that's the whole thing. The navy rum actually refers to it must be distilled in a wooden pot still. Uh, never artificially coloured or flavoured, aged for a minimum of three years and then uh, sort of rested and aged in charred charred oak bourbon barrels i think that's all the facts that i have to tell you about that about pus is the brand in a sense so let's dive into the rums so let's just put these bad boys i kind of don't really know which order to go in to be fair but we'll start off with the blue one now just to kind of clarify things this even though the blue one is the 40 percent abv this is not the original rum okay the gunpowder proof is uh, that is the rum that was that the british navy used to get all right and as i say i'll cover that in a second this one the blue label uh, i know i've called it original a couple of times just because it says original i get confused easily you know me uh it just it's got original on there uh, but the blue rum kind of the blue label kind of stems from the gunpowder proof because let's be honest as a business you know you're not if you're banking your whole business on uh, selling a lot of 54 and a half percent uh, proof rum you're not going to sell that much of it whereas so you bring it down down to abv you bring it down to 40 percent it becomes cheaper it becomes a rum that actually quite a lot of mainstream people will buy um, so it just makes economical and business sense to have a 40% rum in your range. So this is kind of, uh, as I say, not the original, but it's still a glorious rum. Now I've got tasting notes here. Um, where are we go? So colour, and I'm going to agree with this, clear, dark amber. You probably won't see this. I've got my monitor on. I, I need a white piece of paper there. But it is a very deep amber in colour. It's all. It's kind of like, it is, that's the best way to describe it. It is a deep amber in colour. We've got the nose. It's classic Demerara sugar, molasses. Sorry, classic Demerara sugar, molasses, dried fruits, island spices, and caramel. And I get all of that off that. Definitely the caramel. Spices, nutmeg, cinnamon. Oh, hold it, I was gonna taste it now. I'm going for the nose, now I'm going for the nose. Definitely the caramel. Definitely Demerara sugar off that. It does exactly what it says on a tin. And then body, um, so tasting, full round, um, perfect for cocktails, that's what it's kind of. Long finish with a mild spicy burn. And that is just delicious. It really is. Uh, for me, oh, that is, I get I, I get the mild spicy burn. It is lovely. It's warming. It is gorgeous. For me, that pusses. And I've got the categories here where I put this. Uh, I put this in blended age category three for those of you that follow us with Smuggler's Cove category, category, uh, categories. So, so three. I put this in there with the Chairman's, Chairman's Reserve, Dorley's, um, El Dorado 5, El Dorado 8, Plantation 5 year old, which one that one? Um, Plantation XO, The Lover's Rum, which is down here somewhere. Kind of your go-to classic kind of blended rum for cocktails. It is gonna work a treat. Even things like daiquiris, mojitos, cubra libras, not cubra libra, but whatever you wanna call it, Coke. And we're gonna have a little taste with that in a second. Uh, but it just does exactly what it says on a tin. That is gorgeous. Right, gunpowder proof. Let's move on to this. Now, the thing that scares me with this is because it is so flipping drinkable. It's 54.5% ABV. And just to kind of get you uh, where the gunpowder proof is, this goes back to the ship's purser. So, um, obviously, um, you kind of, you know, back in the days, it still does now, people like to play little tricks and stuff like that and make it, you know, go all down that line. The whole point of 54.5% is that um, they could test the rum because if they uh, had a little bit of gunpowder and they kind of wet it, like just immersed it in a little bit of water, if 54.5%, for instance, 
the rum would still ignite. So they've got a bit of gunpowder, they've put it into the rum. If the rum still, if the gunpowder still set on fire after going into the rum, the rum was at proof which is 54.5%, okay, ABV. For instance, if you put gunpowder in that and then try to light the gunpowder, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't set fire, but at 54.5% it does. So that's what the whole gunpowder proof is. And that was the way the kind of Navy uh, used to make sure that the ship's purser wasn't trying to do, do them over with uh, rum quantities. Now, this, let's go, uh, let's go, where are we going? Let's go for the old color. Color, deep, oh, let's get some in the glass. So colour, deep coppery amber with um, burnished copper highlights. I don't know what burnished copper highlights mean, but we shall have a look. So that's, these are all proper official like tasting notes. So, um, clear, deep, and is, is a little bit darker than the pusses, the normal blue label, I'll give them that. So deep copper, definitely. Uh, nose, pungent molasses, treacle, toffee, honey and vanilla with oak, cinnamon, nutmeg and ginger. Now, having demolished quite a bit of that, I can <laughs> safely say that I do get a lot of those spices. Definitely cinnamon, definitely nutmeg, definitely ginger. It's just, it's just scarily good. How good that is as a sipping rum. Um, will this work? Tiki cocktails, yes. Would I use this in daiquiris? Mojitos, no. Style of rum that this really suits is, oh sorry, it's style of drink that this really suits. Actually your Coke as well, this goes really well in the rum and Coke. Uh, Pusses like to do it with orange, and I will cover that in the, in the future, um, but they do that with orange instead of lime. Uh, but definitely your tiki cocktails, uh, even, you know, we, they have got an overproof in the range as well. So you don't even have to use that as an overproof. You can use that in like your pina coladas and things like that as well, uh, because the extra oomph is just going to come through. It is such a good rum. And I promise you, I'm not just saying that because, you know, I've got the Plus, has given me all the stash. It is such a good, good rum. Uh, anything else I've got to tell you? Uh, body, full bodied with more enhanced flavor profile uh, than the lower. Uh, yes, 100% it gives you a lot more flavor than the blue label. Uh, long finish, despite strength, smooth and mellow. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't even need an ice cube in that. I do kind of like sipping my rum with ice, but that is glorious. So as I said, Tiki cocktails, rum and cokes, pina coladas, the pusses, uh, what are we calling it? The pusses, I forgot what it's called. Uh, the painkiller, God, oh, dear, right there. See, I told you I weren't gonna edit this. The painkiller is their version of the pina colada. Uh, I've got a video about that. Go and make it because it is absolutely stunning. So that is the gunpowder proof. Uh, let's go. I'm gonna go for the 15 year old now, uh, because I think, I think I've got these in a logical order. So the 15 year old, um, I've seen a lot of the rum geeks, the rum anoraks, bless them, call this the single malt. Is that right? The single malt of the rum world. Uh, there's a lot of, for some reason, uh, Pusses doesn't get a huge amount of love. The gunpowder proof does, 100%, but the blue doesn't get a lot of love between uh, in the sort of the rum gods, if you like. Uh, the gunpowder proof does, the 15 year old does massively it's won so many awards it's completely different rum it's 100 not a cocktail rum it's very expensive uh, over 50 quid a bottle uh, you are not going to use it in cocktails you really or you really wouldn't even though i kind of did the taste test with the uh, the painkiller you're not going to do it but um where are we going so obviously Ghana classic right uh dark amber in color yes it's kind of actually lighter than i would for this, I would say it's a bit lighter than the blue label. Nose, classic Demerara sugar, molasses, dried fruits, island spices, and caramel. So very similar, uh, the whole flavor profile, or the whole um, um, uh, the whole collection of the rums, whatever you want to call it. I know I'm using the same glass, bit, bit silly, but there we go. And then tasting, oh my God, that is so mellow, so smooth. Um, it's 40% ABV, so it hasn't got, after you've had the gunpowder proof, it hasn't got the kick, but it's such a good sipping rum. Um, and for me, actually, I kind of forget about it as a sipping rum because I go like Pampero Anniversario, I go Flor de Cana 12, um, El Dorado 12. That is a cracking, cracking rum, 15 year old rum. And I didn't make a note of this, but for some reason, I seem to think that 
I don't hold me to that. I, I kind of don't want to say it just in case I'm absolutely miles wrong. But for some reason, I'm going to say it anyway, for some reason, I think 15 years is the minimum run in this. And uh, please, I, I don't hold me to that. I really don't. I've just plucked that out of the air for some reason. Whereas a lot of uh, different rums, different brands, different whiskies will kind of say, uh, you know, it's got a seven-year-old in it and it's got a collection of two-year-olds and three-year-olds. I think 15 years is the minimum. I, th I, don't, I don't know where that came from. Um, but that's that's it's, it's such a glorious glorious run. I absolutely love this. Really, as I say, uh, I've, I kind of think that it's referred to as the single malt of the rum world, and they are not kidding. Right, really good. Right, let's go. One five one overproof. Now, I'm a little bit lost for this because. Uh, so one five one seventy five and a half percent ABV. So one five one in the rum world. For some reason, we don't call it. We we kind of stick to forty ABV. We stick to ABV when it comes to normal rums in the UK, fifty four and a half percent. But when we're talking overproof, for some stupid reason, we call it one five one. We're talking proof instead of seventy five and a half percent. So yeah, that's where you know one five one seventy five and a half percent rum. Now, I say I'm a little bit lost with this because I flipping well love the OFTD. 69% plantation oh flipping Nora that's delicious I, I if I I would struggle to pick between them because this is scarily drinkable very scarily drinkable um let me just run you through nose dark chocolate coffee woody and demerara sugar definitely get the chocolate definitely get the woods on there get definitely oh, coffee notes on that so so good and then taste coffee chocolate and fruity when i drink this this really reminds me of fruit cake it is so good it's just luscious it just really is and i hate to say it because i've got a lot of love for the oftd i think i actually prefer the pusses because as much as I can drink that neat with probably an ice cube, I can really, really drink that neat as well. That is glorious. It has got that burn. It ha of course it has, it's a very strong rum, but it is good. I actually get a lot of uh, salted caramel coming out on that. For me personally, salted caramel, definitely get toffee notes, but fruity, fruit cake, oh, bit of chocolate in there. Oh, it's just glorious. Um, and uses for that, as I say, this is gonna be, um, tiki cocktails overproof you could i wouldn't use it as the base in the pina colada but you could use a little bit in the pina colada kind of pep it up a little bit all those sort of tiki cocktails that is what that's going to be suited to absolutely glorious oh my god i could drink that all day now i've got a oh, oh, wish me luck now <coughs> now i'm not going to talk too long about this it's a video that I did over well at 18 months ago now, I think, of the Gunpowder Proof Spiced. I flipping well love this. Back then, it was one of my out and out favorite spiced rums that I'd ever tasted. It's essentially that rum, plus this Gunpowder Proof, uh, just spiced up. Uh, and I think, uh, did we give, did they actually give us the flavors in there? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure I've got them written down somewhere. But, but I can't I can't think whether I've actually got it. Basically, and the gunpowder proof spice, just to give you the official tasting notes, long, extremely smooth finish, despite the high alcohol contents of 54.5%, so it's not your 40%ers. Uh, dark coppery, burnished, burnished copper highlights, again, whatever that is. Notes, molasses, banana, chocolate, vanilla, cinnamon, and mild ginger. And I tell you, you get all of that in there. One of my favorite ever rum and cokes. Stunning in the pus, pus's painkiller. It is so, so good. Drink it neat, spiced rum cocktails, normal rum cocktails. As I say, that whole painkiller video, I did it with that, but then the variations at the end, I mean, that was stunning. So you can use that in rum cocktails to give you kind of a different flip, a different kind of variety there. So I absolutely love that. Right, just to finish the whole uh, passes tasting off, uh, this is going to form uh, the exclusive part of my membership thing. I've got two banging cocktail recipes here, and this will be, as I say, exclusive content for the membership community uh, to see those recipes there. Absolutely glorious. And members, th that video will go live 
uh, after this has finished uh, premiering. Uh, but the one thing I do want to do, I was going to try and do with most of the rums, is do the whole test, the Coke and ginger test, essentially. Now, as I say, I'm not going to entertain the spiced rum. I've done a whole video about that, and I'll link that in the show description below. You can go and see what I think to that with all these different mixers. I'd love to revisit, but that's just going to take up time, so I just want to keep this. The 151, I don't think you would have it. You would buy it to have it with Coke or ginger. It's going to be like a cocktail kind of thing. I think <laughs> the 15 year old, as I said, is going to be your neat sort of sipping rum. And I really don't think, if you're going to be buying that, I really don't think you should be mixing that with Coke or ginger. That's just completely not a waste. So the two I've got there are the blue label and the gunpowder proof. The blue label's at the front, the gunpowder proof's at the back. So first up, we are going Coke, uh, Coke Zero. So blue label with Coke. very 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 drinkable rum and coke in fact that gives me oh, gives me kind of like nice salt sort of car caramel notes coming off the back of that oh i really kind of like that i've got to do a video i've got to do a whole separate thing where we make the i don't know what they call it but i forget what their name is it but it's the pusses with coke but with orange and then it's orange rimmed around the edge of the glass it sounds delicious instead of lime uh, but this is the gunpowder proof and coke <laughs> oh, I see. That's more me. It kind of gives me those the extra sort of chocolatey coffee notes coming through, extra punch of caramel coming through. Oh, that's good. I could quite happily drink that. Oh, I like that. Right. Uh, the Pusses Blue Label with uh, let's do the old swapsies with a bit of Canada Dry. I keep calling it Canada Dry with ginger ale. Very happily drink that. That is tasty. Really, really tasty. And then the gunpowder proof with, um, so not the spice, just normal gunpowder proof with ginger ale. That's nice. I prefer the Coke. Uh, so for me, gunpowder proof wins the Coke. Uh, Puss is blue wins the ginger ale, definitely. I think there's too much of a, for me, there's too much of a clash of flavours going on. It's not a harmonious blend. Um, that's the best way I can kind of put it. Right, uh, let's swap that out, make sure the lid's done up. What's this one? Oh, this is um, my spiced orange ginger ale, Fever Tree spiced orange ginger ale. So blue label. Yeah, quite happily drink that. That's all, oh, that's good. That is good. The Coke's still the best one for me for the blue so far. Um, oh, I see. That's that's nice. It's better than the normal ginger ale. That is nice. But again, for me, the gunpowder is still the best with the Coke. Uh, it's nice. It's just too much flavour for me going on as a standard sort of highball mixer. That's that. And then the last one, uh, what's the last one? Oh, ginger beer. Or oh, ginger lemonade, but this is ginger beer, my ginger beer. So blue label with ginger beer. Um, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Coke's definitely the hands down winner out of those. Uh, and then, uh, so the gunpowder proof with ginger. Oh, now that's interesting. Oh, wow, the ginger works so much better with the gunpowder proof than the blue. The flavours sort of come together. That's really bizarre because with those two, with the two ginger ales, the kind of flavours is like battling each other. But because the ginger beer is feisty and it's got a lot more kind of fire to it, it kind of does work really well with the gunpowder proof. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I, oh, I think I'm still going Coke, but that's a tough, tough call. Really, really tough call. Um, I think Coke wins it, but that's for both, for gunpowder proof and the normal. But I tell you what, the gunpowder proof with the ginger beer is a pretty damn close second. 
So I hope you enjoyed the pus's tasting. I already got a funny feeling this could be even longer than the first one. Uh, so something that I think I've learned there, don't do a whole brand at a time with four or five rums, maybe just do one rum at a time. But I don't know, we'll see how it comes out. Time to move on to this sly dog spiced rum. And I've got a little smile on my face because there's a little story behind this that just make, cracks me up. So, uh, and I'll, I'll take you back to the story. So mid, uh, well, early pandemic, early 2020, sort of, uh, you know, when, whenever it was, kind of, I don't know, early summer 2020, I get a little direct message. Uh, I don't know, don't know who it was. Uh, Steve, can we send you a rum? We want you to taste him. Um, I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. Didn't really think anything more of it. And then uh, by a bit short while later, uh, this uh, this came through. <laughs> this, this came through my little letterbox. And I was like, what the hell is that? Hopefully, I say I'm not going to do too much editing, but I have got the close-up camera just rolling for a few little bits. So hopefully you can kind of get that. Uh, so thank you, Mummy Sly Dog, <laughs> because I've been reliably informed that that's your handwriting. Uh, so yeah, so this came through and I had a little taste of it and I thought, oh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And I, I, well, I hope I did. I think I did. Uh, so I fed it back and said, yeah, it's quite nice. Really like that. Didn't think anything more about, about it at all. Uh, COVID happened, you know, life happened uh, a year and a few months later down the line. And do you, do you know what? I'm thinking now, this might have even been, I, I think this was last year. I, I can't even remember when this came through the door. Anyway, uh, roll back literally a couple of weeks uh, from from today, from when I'm filming this. And uh, I, I'm walking around Rumfest in London. Uh, it's kind of the trade day in Rumfest. And I, I kind of see this. I've done a lap and I've kind of seen this. And there's two, the two lads are there, white lads. Uh, and they've, they've kind of recognised me. They've got Steve, Steve the Barman, how are you? And then we got chatting. I was like, that's really cool, Brandon. I really love what you've done there. That is epic. Because branding wise, let's be honest, sticked out on the bar. Can we see that? That's just flipping, wherever you put that, just flipping well stands out, doesn't it? No matter where you put that, that stands out. Branding wise, they are bang on point. I've got a few little things to show you. But anyway, uh, they were kind of like, that was us. We sent you in a sample uh, and all that. And it wasn't, it literally took me a couple of minutes to kind of remember. And it wasn't until I got home that came through and looked through all my little samples over there that I saw this and went, oh, it's that one. So this was the end product. This is the sample they sent off um, to me and um, various other people. And this is the finished product. And I have to say, tasting this at Runfest, I haven't even opened this yet, but tasting this at Runfest, oh my God, this blew me away. Uh, so let's just open this. So this is a spiced rum. He says let's open this. Uh, the thing's already broken off my hands. There we go. So spiced rum. Let me read you off uh, the backstory. So um, I told you the backstory. The, the rum itself is a blend of Jamaican and Dominican Republic rums in here. Uh, and it's a secret blend of spices. So we don't know. And they won't tell me because I said, oh, I can pick this off there. And they were like, they wouldn't confirm or deny uh, what I what's actually spiced up it is a very very secret um, and that's all I can really tell you about the spice drum hang on let's, there we go before we get any further the, the care package that came through I just want to this is where your branding is on point so we've got some we've got some cups there I kind of like that we've got this is how it all come packaged look at that orange it's properly on point here we've got a couple of those Proper, properly on point they are you know they've done this out on camera yeah that's on camera properly bang on point We've got some, uh, I think there's two different types of coasters there. So, you know, Sly Dog, can we see that? And then Made in, made in Secret, Drunk in Style. I love the tagline, I love it. Made in Secret, Drunk in Style, love that. And then Sly Dog, I don't know where the dog, I should have asked them what the dog reference is. Whether they, you know, but I'm, I'm assuming it's a family dog, I don't know. I don't know what the dog is, but on the house. Anyway, T-shirt, come through and I haven't kind of, born this yet there we go made in can we see that on the back there made in oh where is it let's put it up there made in can we see that there we go made in secret drunk in style that's on your bum when you're walking around and then we've got a little we've got a little postcard little note from them cheers guys and then the hats as well i might put the hat on I might put the beanie on there we go so we've got that so 
let's do the rest of this review in this in this hat. So uh, let's crack on and taste this. I am, I'm actually going to do a little. I don't know whether to do this. A little side by side. Here we go. I never drink all the samples, just just in case. You know, people think, oh, it's only fifty mil. Why have you not polished it off? Um, just in case for times like this. I don't know whether it's the same liquid. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Where are we going? Uh, so for this, what are we getting for this? Oh, I tell you, smell what it just smells. You know, cinnamon, vanilla, banana. I get massive cola nuts off here, like cola. I I can taste. Do you know the the, the cola sweets? I can t I can smell and taste the cola bottles. So I don't know whether they've used the cola nut in here or or what, but I I, I don't know. But it's, it's just smooth. I know it's a cliched word. It's smooth. It's delightful. I've got banana. I've got little bits of toffee. Cola. I want to say it just reminds me of cola, which makes me think, I know I've not done this yet. It makes me think it's going to be a cracking rum and coke. It's just a lovely, lovely spiced rum. I wouldn't say overly sweet either. Um, I used to do this thing with my spice rum reviews where I'd rate the sweetness. Um, and I, I'm going to put that firmly mid level. Obviously, it's sweeter than normal rums, so of course it is. Uh, but I don't think it's actually that sweet. Do you get the rum characteristics coming through? No. Can you tell it's rum? Yes, of course you can tell it's rum. Um, but you don't get, you know, you, it's where we've got Jamaican, Dominican. Do I get Jamaican rum off that? No, because I've, obviously we've got the spices, we've got a little bit of sweetness coming on there. It kind of, you know, do we get that? No. But the whole finished product, does the Jamaican rum probably add to that finish? It probably does. Uh, does the Dominican Republic? No, I haven't had too many Dominican Rep Republic rums. I'm thinking uh, Cruzan, maybe. Uh, but you know, not too many. My Dominican pup, rum, pump, my <laughs> my Dominican rum kind of knowledge is pretty minimal. But the whole round. This is the point. The whole round package of that is got. I'm getting orange off that now. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't had that before. I'm getting a little bit of well off that. I'm getting a little bit of orange off there. Orange cola, oh, that changes. Definitely toffee, definitely banana. It's just good. Spice, nice bit of spice, bit of cinnamon, nutmeg. Ginger, maybe? It's kind of that little, oh. Now, the thing I wanted to do for this is kind of, I just sort of seeing, I think it's a slightly different color, but. Smell-wise, they smell the same. I reckon, oh, I don't know. I think that's that, I think the sample, and I, I really don't know whether that is the exact rum, whether that was the finished sample or not. That's got a little bit more spice to it for me, a little bit more kind of gingery feistiness. I don't know whether I'm right in that, but very, very similar. Like literally, I'm, I'm literally splitting hairs on that. Very, very similar. I just think maybe a slightly more spice. So if, if I don't know, if I was taking a, if I was taking a wild hunch, I would, just, I would say they might have dialed down the spice. Whether the spice has come out over time, as I say, that's over a year old. I don't know. I'll tell you what, I was flipping up with this one. Hoo -hoo! Um, but that is such a gorgeous spiced rum to drink, Nick. Now, uh, I've got a couple of cocktails to show you, and I know I wasn't going to edit too much, but I, I've kind of found a way of doing these. Uh, but the one thing we are going to do uh, live, live and direct, is the whole kind of tasting, because I want to do this uh, to give to give the guys, to give the all these brands. If you've got a spiced rum, if you've got a new rum, come to market. Give us a shout. Let's get it on. Let's give you some publicity. Let's get it. Let's get it on. Right. Uh, make sure I do this in the right order because I've got that. It's my ginger ale, spiced orange ginger ale. Uh, me, me normal ginger ale. Trevor, I know you're going to be watching it, and I did it for the first one. I did it for passes. He said, "Getting ready. We'll cut time." But if you're getting ready, that's going to be a, more editing. Right, Coke. Ginger beer, right, there we go. So same order as before. Right, uh, let's go. Sly 
Sly Dog Spiced Ramen Coke. They have got a lot of recipes on the um, on their website. Uh, they've got mojitos on the website. They've got old fashions, which I really want to try. There was a really cool um, uh, espresso martini with their Guinness syrup. And I haven't, I really wanted to do it. And I haven't got Guinness here. I thought Mummy, but Mummy Barman drinks Guinness, and I thought she'd have some, but I can't find it unless she's got it stashed away somewhere. Um, so Sly Dog and Coke, but we have got a few cocktails coming up. Or oh, cinnamon really comes through on that. That is, that is perfect for me. I love right, and and you, do you know what? It's very different uh, to the gunpowder proof spiced and coke. Very very different, and I love them both equally. That is a very good spiced and coke. You are not you spiced rum and coke fans are not going to be disappointed with this. That is going to be epic. Right, uh, normal ginger. Happily drink that all day long. All day long, that is so good. Spiced orange ginger ale. Oh, doesn't disappoint. This is an all rounder. This is an all rounder. And I'm looking forward to doing the whole tropical soda testing with this in the pusses at the end because I think tropical soda with that is gonna be amazing. Oh, that works as well, the old ginger. It's a full house, it works. Um, I'm not gonna bother doing the whole ting test and all that because ting's gonna come out in the right in the video of its own. Oh, it's flipping off with this one. Um, I honestly I'm excited about this because I as I say, branded wise, this is, is the liquid's gotta hold up. It, when you come up, when you come up with something this bold, it's like like a footballer wearing like bright yellow football boots or white football boots back in the day. You know, if he didn't have the skills to back it up, he just, you know, it was it was just you just got laughed at. When something comes out and it looks that simple, but when it's come out and it's you know it is simple branding, absolutely simple branding, but it just physically stands out on anywhere you put that. Anywhere, and I'm thinking pubs, back bars. That's what I'm, it's bars, uh, pubs, whatever. I'm thinking back bars, bang on point, and the liquid doesn't disappoint. Um, there was nothing really to put in it, uh, to tell you about that. So I'll just read you, it's very, very two short sentences. A quality spiced Caribbean rum with a real bite made for the party animal. This is gonna go to student bars. I'm going back to my student bar days now. And if I was still running the student bars, this would fly out. Uh, currently crafted with genuine expertise using ferocity for using a ferociously guarded uh, blend of spices Ma made in secret drunk in i love that tagline made in secret secret drunk in style i really want to meet the dog now right so the thing i like to do with the spice run i don't really do them for the normal rums because i do them on my live shows and in the standalone videos but i'm going to do cocktail recipes for the spice drums in the in the show now this one this one is flipping gorgeous uh for the for the normal ones amongst you you're never going to know because this is exclusive uh, to my members community uh, members you will see this going in there that's the recipe for that oh my god this is so good and if you want to find out just click the join button be below now i'll tell you everything you come in there it's really cheap you come join us and it's good fun as well so uh, i'm going to do two recipes that now that are actually on the um um, Sly Dog, I keep wanting to call it something else, but a Sly Dog uh, website. So the first one I'm going to do is the Sly Thai, which I thought was epic. Whoever came up with that name, uh, genius. So the Mai Thai, obviously, when a Sly Thai. So we're going for 60 mil uh, of uh, Sly Dog Spiced Rum. Brilliant. Uh, Orange Liqueur, they've got Cointreau. I don't, uh, well, I have got a little dribble, but I don't use Cointreau. And they say 25 mil of Cointreau. So I've orange liqueur, essentially. Uh, so I'm going 25 mil of orange liqueur. Fortunella is my little brand of choice. Uh, they want 25 mil of lime juice now, which I've got tucked away down here. Uh, so 25 mil of freshly squeezed lime juice or jat syrup. There we go. Uh, 20 mil of or jat syrup. That's what we're going there. I'm going to bang through these. Recipes will be in the description below and on their website. Go and check, check them out, Sly Dog. So it's Sly Dog, Dog, I forget what it is now. Uh, but the, the link to the website will be in the description below. And then on the, on the website, it says 30 ml of pineapple or orange juice. 
Uh, I've got both. The orange juice is coming in the next one. So I'm going to go pineapple juice for this. So 30 ml of pineapple juice. Lovely jubby. And then the one thing I missed was it's got a dash of grenadine. Now, excuse me. Oh, you know me, the gas is coming. Sort of coke and ginger. I really can't handle the gas. Uh, I think the dash of grenadine might have been afterwards because it'll get served over crushed ice and drizzled the grenadine. However, uh, I'm going to add it to the cocktail and shake it. So a dash, literally there. There we go. About five mil. That'll do. About five mil grenadine. That'll be about a dash. If you want to add it in the end afterwards, um, because at the end of the day, it's all going to come in together, isn't it? Once you want to kind of stir it up. So shake it down. Shake it down, shake it down, shake it down. And five, you know, the drill, 10, I don't know, it's this hat, I'm not drunk, it's this hat, I tell you. Um, 10 to 12 seconds. <laughs> right, that'll do, that'll do, power shake, oh, it's nice and pink. And um, we're going for Mai Tai Territory. And annoying, there will be a bit of Eddie in there. I, d I tell you, I'm guilty of putting these back in different places. It was right beside it, just in the wrong hole. Um, so I'm going, I don't know why I'm double straining. There we go. Single strain of that. And then it's a crushed ice job. Plenty of crushed ice. Look at the colour of that. So this is the sly tie. I've got a bit of pineapple there. Perfect. I've got another pineapple front. What's the sly tie taste like? Taste like? Oh, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? Oh, that's scary good. I have to say, and I'm not just saying this, not as good as that. Legends, members, is flipping good, but not as good as that. That pips it. That's epic. And then last cocktail. Uh, where's, where's my... Let's go for this one. Um, and they've got a sneaky screwdriver. Now, uh, for all you people that watch me, Timmy K, I've picked this one just for you. Over in the States, Timmy. Because Timmy always tells me to try rum with orange juice, and I never do. So this one is specifically for you, uh, because it's an American cocktail anyway, it's screwdriver. So we're going for, oh, this one's 50 mil. So we're going for 50 mil of Sly Dog uh, spiced rum. And we're going for 150 ml of freshly squeezed orange juice. Uh, so, what's that? That's 50. Should just free pour this really. Uh, 100. There we go. Perfect. 150 ml of that. There was something else, wasn't there? Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters. In my little dash bottle. So, Angosturas. There we go. Little dash of that. And then I'm going to crush ice. So, Timmy K. This, this is specifically for you because you're always on me to try rum and orange juice. Um, so let's go, let's go for it. Rum and orange, spiced rum and orange. What's it called? The sneaky screw, screw oh God, the sneaky screwdriver. Oh, that's good. That is good. Rum. I get car I really do get caramel notes off that rum when mixed. I don't need, but when mixed, especially with the Coke, that's really interesting. That's a great, lads, great rum. Honestly, I wish you all the success in the world. Um, that's just phenomenal. Brilliant. Well done. So I've given up like, trying to make this show 30 minutes. It's never going to happen. I love a waffle. I'm really, really sorry it's that long. I will try and keep it down. As I say, I think I've found the error of my ways. It's literally taking five rums uh, in one go. I think if I keep it, the first part to one rum, um, which is going to be hard because I want to talk about Dawleys and I want to talk about Florida Carne in like one. But we'll, we shall see. We shall see how the viewing goes, the viewing figures. Anyway, uh, let's get into the mixer of the week. Now, is, if you're new to this, if you didn't watch the first show, mixer of the week, uh, I'm going to take a different mixer that you kind of, May have heard of, but not kind of kind of thought about too much. I mean, Fentiman's Tropical Soda is this week's. It's been out there quite readily. You can get it quite easily in most supermarkets. Tesco's, no. But Sainsbury's, Aldi, Morrison's, yes. Ocado, 100% yes. Amazon, yes, easily. Because um, that's where that came from. Um, 
So you can get it really easily. Fentiment has been out there a while, but I'm going to take brands that you kind of may not have thought of um, and kind of that's the whole point is. So we're sticking to the Coke, the ginger beer and the ginger ales for the normal tasting. And then this this is where this part goes. Now, there's a second part to this because uh, so this rock drops on a Thursday. On the Saturday mornings, I'm going to be rolling three short videos up to 60 seconds, 40 but the first couple were 40 seconds, 40 and a 53, I think, seconds cocktail recipes, either three, four or five ingredients. And even when I do five ingredients, well, literally two of those, three of those will be like citrus and bitters and that. So we're talking very, very simple cocktails. That's the whole point. So there are, so the content coming now, I'm going to be doing a taste test with these rums that I fe featured in, the, in this uh, video. But look out for the shorts on Saturdays. All three will drop at 8 o'clock UK time, 8 a.m. UK time. Simple serving suggestions. If you've got your own, let me know in the comments below. Brilliant. Um, but I just kind of want to bring, look, broaden your horizons. This is what I do well. Uh, I could go literally all day, every day, 365 days of the year with rum, like three, three, four, five ingredient cocktails. Simple highballs, that's what they are. So, Fentiman's Tropical Soda. Let's crack it. What is it? Pineapple. Essentially, it's pineapple soda. Think of it not as sweet as your old Jamaica pineapple soda, which I absolutely love. Really, really love it. And I'm kind of feeling trying to think of the other pineapple soda, and I really can't think of what it is at the moment. London Essence has got one as well that's just been launched, and I will be featuring that as well. Uh, but this, as I say, think of it not as sweet. And the reason why I kind of love this is because what not as sweet means is that you can kind of get away and add other flavours. And you will see uh, from the shorts videos, I've got some with ginger coming, I've got some with orgeat syrup coming, because you can add sugar syrup to this and it doesn't make it oversweet. Whereas the old Jamaica stuff, I absolutely love the taste of it. It's by far and away my favourite pineapple soda by a million miles. But you start adding orgeat syrup to it and it just becomes too sweet and you can add lime juice to balance it out but then you kind of get, for me, I kind of get, you, you know, so I love the Fentiman's Tropical Soda. Uh, pineapple Soda, hint of cardamom and I think going back to the old days, if it's still the same, bear in mind I haven't had a bottle of this for ages. It used to have juniper and it used to have pear extract. Yeah, it has, right, there we go. Juniper, pear, juniper berry, kaffir lime leaves, lemongrass and pear extract pear concentrate in there essentially but think of it as pineapple with a hint of cardamom it's just got a few other little flavors to tie it all together so absolutely delicious um this is the bottle you'll pick up in most supermarkets one pound 80 i think and even on the front of the bottle this is why Fentiman stole a march on Fever Tree and Schweppes because they are the first brand, and all they are, Double Dutch, all of them, it's the first brand to kind of identify that the rum is coming. And Schweppes, I've had this bone of contention with Schweppes because they released the Dark Muscovado Mixer 2018. They were like me. They were just two years ahead of the time. That's all. They delisted it. They stopped making it. Oh, it didn't sell. It didn't sell. But of course, we were too early. We were too early for the rum the train the spice drum train drop it now it sells it flies off the shelves but they've just you know they've just lost it they've just stopped doing it this mixed with rum or premium dark spirits for an exotic for an exquisitely exotic drink fentimans have nailed it this is a something different from your standard coke and ginger ginger beer ginger ale so first off uh, so what we're going to what we do in this video, I think I've got it. Yeah, I know I've got this the right way around. So we've got right. So I've got Sly Dog there. So I'm going to taste this with Sly Dog. I've got Puss's Blue, Puss's Gunpowder, and uh, yeah, hundred hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Puss's Blue, Puss's Gunpowder, Puss's Gunpowder spiced. All right. There's no point doing the overproof. You're never going to have an overproof with mixer. Some of you might. Claire, I'm looking at you, Claire. I am looking at you. Some of you might, uh, but most of you won't. Most of you use the overproof for, Jesus. Most of you will use the overproof for um, uh, tiki cocktails, things like that. You're certainly not gonna do the, um, <laughs> sorry, I thought the lid was still on. <laughs> Tell you, we're not editing this, we're not editing. Uh, you, you're not gonna do the 15 year old. 15 year old is just sipping me, all right? So, uh, Sly Dog. We've got that, we've got Puss's Blue, we've got Puss's Gunpowder, 
and we've got pus's uh, gunpowder proof spice. You think I might be a little bit, I'm a little bit tipsy, but not, not. I, I genuinely thought the lid was on for that. So, Sly Dog, let's, uh, we've just finished Sly Dog. Oh, that's good. Uh, pineapple is such, pineapple, I don't know why, pineapple is such an underrated mixer. People think, oh, pineapple juice. Mm. Pineapple sodas, like fizzy, are so underrated. And I can't wait to get the, uh, I want to do a head-to-head -head with the old Jamaica and uh, the London uh, London Essence because that's that's going to be a big matchup. Whoever can supply supermarkets more is going to smash that. Uh, it really is because that is definitely the trend that is coming. Sly Dog and that, amazing. But... I will say for a lot of you, you are going to want to stay tuned for my shorts because I think for a lot of you, the reason why you don't buy that is because it's not as sweet. You kind of do need a little bit of sweetness. So your old Jamaicas, your uh, London Essence, are going to smash it because they are sweetened. This, a little bit, but not much. But I've got some belters coming for you on Saturday. Absolute belters. Right, Puss's Blue Label. That is good. Just rum, pineapple, probably a wedge of orange in there, to be fair. Oh, that's just oh, that's just really, really good. Really good. I say, I, I rate, I, I've loved this for well over two years now. Absolutely. I think, I, did I make, I, I think I put this down there. I've got the date that it was launched. Yeah, quarter two of 2019. There we go. Q2. So we're talking like Easter time of uh, 2019. Um, I'm not convinced it was April, I think May, May to June 2019 was when that came out. So we have had a good two years of this now. Blue wins that over the gunpowder proof. Again, it's that same thing with the ginger. There's too many flavors in the gunpowder proof fighting through for a simple mixer. The, gun, the blue works. The blue works exceptionally well as a spirit mixer or just a highball simple cocktail. The gunpowder proof works exceptionally well for cocktails. Add a few more flavours to that. Bit of sweetness, bang, that's going to work. The spiced. It, see, it, it's just good. But I know, I know just adding... And and I'm not using I'm not using the uh, spiced in any of my highball shorts, but I just know, adding a little dribble of orgeat syrup, just a sneaky little little dribble, because they are stronger rums. I just know, I, I've got my fat. I know. <laughs> I knew it would. <laughs> added that little bit of sweetness. <laughs> oh, well, oh, hello. I think we're we'll laying that there. Um, stay. Oh, I, that. I, I think that's the key, right? It's going. This is going to be epic for spiced rums because they are sweetened. Uh, you know they are. I've talked about this in the first video. The amount of sugar that's added to rums and all that. That's going to be absolutely epic for spiced rums. It really is because they are sweetened. If you're using a normal rum. That's where you can play about as your orgeat syrups, and your ginger syrups, honey, 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 pineapple, honey syrups, uh, coconut syrups, mango, you name it. It's just, it's just going to be phenomenal with rums. It really is. Kind of like easy cocktails, just like that. Maybe a squeeze of lime, job's done. So there endeth uh, show two, uh, an absolute blockbuster, epically long. I will try and keep this, um, it's really hot in this hat. Uh, <laughs> I will try and keep the show a, a bit shorter next week. We might just try and pick out one rum, but I know I've got a few of you rum brands uh, sending me stuff now to do this. So we shall see how we go. But I can't, do you know what? The, the, my core community are going to watch. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I know you're going to watch and it's you guys that I am talking to. So thank you very much for the love. Thank you very much. As always, I will see you uh, Sunday night live.